This is Off the Break Podcast, presented by Silver Screen Insider. Welcome to Off the Break Podcast. I'm Cody, and with me are Kyle and sort of Eric. Sort, <laughs> sort of. of Eric. It's the second to last right one here. with you. I have to start. My penultimate appearance. I ha- yeah. Did I we have... ever make like an actual announcement about that? Yes. We did. Oh, like we, an official now... one, but it was just like, we don't have very many of these left. Nope. And now we know it's officially. It's been like big teases, but people sad. are like, right. what? What's that? Just act as if there's nothing different. No. And then no, I can't. I need now. to start cutting the cord. <laughs> <laughs> like the baby bird is flying the nest. So close to 100. To I got to push, start pushing you out, though. It's fine by me. <laughs> so this is the second to last episode with Eric. Last episode will be on Valentine's Day next week. <laughs> oh, love, so fitting. Loss. Love, because we it's, love Eric. What a tragedy next week is going to be. Seriously. It's, love and loss. The Eric is going to be... Or the, Eric, <laughs> the Eric the is going to be The no episode more. is going to be dedicated entirely to Eric. Yeah. We're going to no. look back on his we highs are. and no, little lows. We were just talking highs about how, how I hated birthday parties because I don't want to be the center of attention. Oh. <laughs> we're going to get all the Valentines to you. <laughs> yeah, no one else will get Valentines but you. Yeah, We're going to talk only about you for the oh, podcast. God. It's going to be a wonderful day for us to remember you and an awful day for you. Is it going to be on <laughs> Podcast 99 too? I think it's it possible, might be. Actually. <laughs> oh, we were I think so last close. week was 97, this is right. 98. <laughs> That's weirdly fitting I don't yeah know. that's funny <laughs> just didn't quite make it there <laughs> we were so close so close eric we'll figure out a way to work it back in what though. better yeah. way to end it than talking even more about the oscars and of course even more oh. about eric <laughs> <laughs> all all eric all the time all of our thoughts nope that's what i'm gonna mention how, when you're gone how excited i'm gonna keep was. talking about you on the podcast <laughs> the joker won everything <laughs> <laughs> that's probably gonna happen just so that i have to talk about it yeah oh my god we'll will it into existence <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. well we'll see when we when we yeah. get there we but will for now we'll be talking about oscars <laughs> for now kyle tell us all about birds of prey it was delightful <laughs> you liked it Don't no act i like it was <laughs> no i i really did i really did enjoy it um uh what did I, you enjoy about it yeah i did enjoy margot robbie of course like she's the best part of the abysmal suicide squad um but she finally gets her own movie and she gets to take the reins go crazy with it and they she's definitely like the don't main producer back about too, that right? margo is yeah it's like her baby we keep saying abysmal suicide squad but it didn't it make over a hundred million dollars doesn't mean it was good it doesn't mean it's good at all <laughs> the transformers saying. horrible movie the transformers movies each make a billion dollars it also won an academy award <laughs> Academy That's true, award though. Academy Suicide Award yeah. winning Squad. Suicide Squad. Academy I should award winning blockbuster success Suicide Squad. Yeah, so she gets her spinoff. Is she going to live up to Suicide Squad's hype? Yeah, well, how the, movie, the movie hype. as a whole, how do you think... It's opening, it's award winningness. Okay, oh, let's let's well. go back even farther. How many people were at your early show? Not very many. <laughs> no? Oh. No. Um, well, I think it was pretty ugly weather. So. Yeah, we did have some... Movie? We did have some bad weather... I did kind of notice that the people I was sitting next to didn't look the most well dressed. Oh, so I the Jeez. trashiness of what you were saying kind of went into my mind. I it wasn't all bad, but like there was just a few people where I was like, uh, Kyle mm. was slumming it. Like some sketchy. <laughs> like somehow your words kept in my mind. I was like, holy crap, is she actually gonna be right about this day? Like he's going there because he really likes Harley Quinn. I love the <laughs> hot topicness of it all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but really though, it is like it did feel like the Suicide Squad movie that they were trying to make, just with Harley Quinn at the center stage. And they did a better job at it for sure. Like she is very entertaining. The movie is much more entertaining. Uh, a lot of it comes from uh, really good action sequences. Uh, Ewan McGregor is great. He did not disappoint. A lot of people criticize him for being over the top, but I think it's wonderful. Isn't, like this whole movie over the top. Yeah, which I don't know. I don't know why they're <laughs> like, do you saying know what he's you're over seeing? the top. Do you know what you paid to see? I don't know. It was it was it worked for me. It, it, it was just um, a more interesting villain. Um, a mix of like over the top mixed with uh, him kind of having some personal demons, some inner self-conscious stuff that he's fighting with. And it makes it, it's not fully explained there, but top three DC movie villains go. I can't say that off the top of my head. I guess uh, Joker, he uh, Heath Ledger's Joker, of course. No, I mean DC, like 
Oh, universe is he going to be one? I don't know. I, I don't think about it. No, of it. their recent movies. You know how we talked about how the Marvel I had like lots of really Lowe's bad Joker. villains? <laughs> yeah, we know you did. But then their villains started getting Daddy's a little bit better. This. And then Thanos was like a really good villain. With the DC movies, mm, which, yeah. which of the DC movie villains do you think are the best? And where does Ewan rank among them? Are the best out of the new bunch? I think yeah. he would be Namor. like my favorite right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is Namor I'm, Aquaman's brother? No, that's Isn't the Marvel, Marvel version of oh. Aquaman. Okay, never mind then. You were thinking of Orn? Orm? Orm? Something like that? Okay. Honestly, I I forgot about him in that movie, so there Still you go. Still haven't seen that movie. So, yeah, you're, not, <laughs> you're not missing too much. I um, haven't seen it again. I've only saw it the one time in theater. I haven't seen it again. That's why I couldn't remember his name. <laughs> what did we decide was good DC villains? I don't know. I don't Are think, there any? I, I don't s- think there are. I said I haven't seen this Black movie, Mask, so I don't know. This guy. Black Mask. This because like as good as Wonder He's my Woman was, the new bunch, yeah. Um, and I kind of like that twist, but the the whole CGI showdown trope was definitely the weakest part of In Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. Oh, so for that sure. made me not like that villain as much. Yeah, as I thought I was going to. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, Shazam's guy, Mark Strong, right? He was the bad yeah. guy. I actually did like him. I liked him. He was pretty good. Yeah, Mark Strong did a good job at like adding his, on to the cheese his, of it villain had just a sad quality yeah i like the a, fake out beginning with like, yeah his origin yeah we're a child that just doesn't get you know mm-hmm. to be special that's just kind of yeah. sad and melancholy you and tell then. everybody that they're special but and then if you take a lot that of people away who just totally are not special <laughs> <laughs> but they, but they did take it away <laughs> cruel they're like change my mind yeah. <laughs> you killed your whole family it's all your fault you're special but in a bad way <laughs> you're a bad special <laughs> yeah so he is not too bad no cool. Ewan McGregor is great in this um, Ooh, that's good I mean I, I figured he would be but yeah it's but Ewan he, McGregor he he's disappoint. always great he doesn't disappoint for Suicide sure Suicide Squad villain was horrible except for Amanda Waller she was Joker good. I know yeah he was awful Joker was so good <laughs> no he wasn't <laughs> You could. It's one thing to say you have a guilty pleasure, and you know yeah, it's like silly, it. but you can't say he was so good. He was. No, no. <laughs> what was good about Unless him? Unless if you say so good, I it's thought, bad. Maybe. <laughs> I just liked his look. I liked his like craziness. And I liked how he came back for Harley Quinn at the end. Like that was so. The this whole breakup thing doesn't make sense to me because he came no, back. No, it makes for her. perfect sense. He is very he's abusive a, to her. Yeah, he's a toxic, possessive, abusive. <laughs> they boyfriend. make that very clear in the beginning too. Like she I mean, explains it very. Isn't their well. whole thing just Stockholm syndrome? Oh yeah. 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 That's what it's all built on. <laughs> <laughs> timeless love story of Stockholm. A timeless syndrome. love story adds to the trashiness of it all. Yeah. Uh, so despite Harley Quinn and Black Mass being like the my favorite characters, I think all the other ones kind of take too much of a backseat despite it being Harley yeah. Quinn's kind of solo movie and it trying to be an ensemble piece. As what are much, their names again? Uh, Black Canary, Huntress, um, and then there was two other uh, <laughs> characters, Cassandra, Cassandra just, and Renee. You saw this less than 12 hours ago. <laughs> I think it's Cassandra and Renee. It's just a testament to how inconsequential yeah. those other characters are. But yeah, and that's what's disappointing. Like, Is it kind of like in Suicide Squad where like obviously Will Smith and Margot Robbie are the main people? Yeah. And the other people are just kind of in the background. Yeah, but I remember yeah. all their I mean, names. I mean, they're done. I feel like I remember most of their names. It's done much better than Suicide Squad because that script is not good, but <laughs> it, it still isn't enough to where they get put in the spotlight all that much. Um, it, they really just take a back seat too much to my liking. I was really hoping for them to be a bit more pivotal. Yeah, they get like maybe pivotal. a cool one liner and then like that's it. They get those small yeah. scenes to where you're like, oh, I like that. Like a that cool was roundhouse cool. kick. Yeah, exactly. But they. I think they could have done a lot more to those characters. Um, and the structure of the story, while I think it was a bit risky, and I th- and I liked that they wanted to do something a bit different with storytelling, um, it kind of suffered from becoming too much explaining of like what the story is, of who these characters are. Just a lot of build-up. Yeah, set up. a lot too of build-up. to not enough showing. Yeah, pretty much. And it, it tries to do so in... Um, Harley Quinn narrations or in like time skips and it, it again like it, it could have been a cool way to tell this story but it just wasn't it wasn't landing like it just became so much bloatedness that it takes up almost half the runtime. yeah and you're like are these guys ever gonna get yeah and once like, they finally do it's the climax and then it's the end and you're like oh that ended really fast that was a bit weird um, but I heard that it like it jumps around in the time f- lines 
like you said, yeah. with narration, like, oh, mm-hmm. this happened because this happened. Oh, and wait, I got to go back to this point. Yeah. It, yeah. And it tries that's... it tries to be funny, but it, those parts right. don't land as well as some more subtle jokes. Like, do you think that's um, like them trying to do the movie as like the chaos that's in Harley Quinn's head because she's the narrator? So they're like, yeah, oh, this is how Harley Quinn would actually describe to you the events of this film. Yeah, definitely. That's why I think that it would have been an uh, interesting way to tell the story and it would have been a great way to have us enjoy the character of Harley Quinn even more. Like that makes a lot of sense. I just don't think it stuck the landing very well. I think that's hard to do in visual storytelling is jumping around and, and doing all yeah, that. It, yeah. It, maybe, I don't know. There, it can be done. It just be much didn't easier work. For that. Well, yeah. I mean, the, the few movies that do pull it off really well, everybody like loves a lot. And so they try to copy it because they're you know, it's cool when you mm-hmm. see it pulled off. It stands out. But, you know, not everybody can do, like, a Pulp Fiction type thing. Right. Doesn't and then, work and then, for every story. And then when you add in the, like, witty, silly voiceover, you have to... It's a very uh, fine balance you have to strike. Yeah. I don't think the fine balance worked, but I still came out enjoying myself. I thought Harley Quinn just really made this movie entertaining as a whole. Same with um, <laughs> Black Mask. <laughs> Um, I'm sorry, just, I'm losing my train no, of thought. It's, okay. it's just so funny because um, Ken came back after watching it last yeah. night, and he's like, "That's awful. That was the most awful movie." Yeah, he came into the office today. He's like, "So, uh, what did you think right. of Birds of Prey?" He took a friend, and the friend was like, "Ooh, that's brutal." Yeah. Like, even the friend didn't like it. Yeah, I mean, I that was brutal. T- it's awful. It was funny though because Ken <laughs> and I had like the exact same uh, oh. notices. Uh, yeah. between us in the movie but I don't know for some reason I still ended up having a good time Maybe with it, it as compared to him I don't know the difference of seeing it at six and then the difference of seeing it at nine after cocktails and a half an hour of previews and you're like <laughs> frustrated it's by that very possible <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the cocktails warp their minds maybe you think no. that would make it a little more enjoyable but sometimes it can or, have the opposite effect or it, true it brought out their old men <laughs> like oh, yeah, they're cranky out of touch cranky old man out of touch <laughs> that's probably what happened. I, I hope that's not the case female trash empowerment movie those, <laughs> those girls should put on more clothes they're probably cold <laughs> <laughs> probably cold put on a sweater yeah, <laughs> um, yeah for whatever them. reason i still really dug it but i understand if some people come out not liking it all that much well i think it's on track to make fif- somewhere in the 50 million range do you think so. it'll hold up I'd ask Ken that, and he said no. <laughs> mm, I mean, it's 45. Doing, it's doing I think okay. 45. It's doing okay work. critically. and A lot better than I thought it would, actually. Yeah, and again, you know, Rotten Tomatoes is... If you only look at the number, yeah, you'd be like, whoa, 90%. That's amazing. And then you're like, oh, it's... Actually, it's more like a 6 out of 10. But, yeah. you know, that's still three stars. six reviews. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how audiences uh, react to it once you know, the actual weekend happens. Yeah. I'll, I'll definitely be on the lookout for that. If, when I was asking Ken about the film, it sounded like there was this very concerted effort to just push away the, the Joker character. Like yeah, he's he animated. Sucks. You don't see his voice. And <laughs> Oh, you for know, sure. Cause he's horrible that. for sure. I thought that was kind of funny. Like it, this movie is definitely staying on the realm of like, Hey, we're our own story. Like we'll make, nods to you know other characters and things but will still be our own story but at the same time it's making fun of jared leto and suicide yeah squad. but i mean like it, it, some people may be confused much, but i i, I don't know I as much as i just despise that joker yeah um i do think it's a you you should at least acknowledge that that is the joker that harley right. quinn was with you know like i feel like you can yeah you can kind of in a meta way kind of poke fun at how poor of a casting choice a lot of people thought that was but still like show him but maybe jared leto his inner diva was like i'm not gonna be in this if you're gonna make fun of me oh there's no way oh yeah no he yeah was, he's way too big of a I'm diva not gonna for be that. and even and even the studio made didn't... a joker movie <laughs> yeah. before my joker movie yeah and <laughs> even mean, if the studio like didn't that. ask him oh, like i sh- doubt that they want people to remember him in the first place I used like to... i think so many Did people just like dislike that version that they just want to be like, hey, that's we totally acknowledge what it, it but let's that's kind. Move it's, it, that's on, you, know? you know, like with the Terminator sequels, so many people hated those, so they yeah. just pretended like it didn't, they didn't happen. happen. 
are yeah. kind of doing that with this Joker. Um, and I'm sure Suicide Squad right. 2 next year will do the same thing. Did you like the animation at the beginning? Because Ken didn't like that at all. Like, he sat through so many commercials and uh, trailers and then gets animation at the beginning. He, uh, he's did, like, this is lame. He's too I grown up s- for cartoons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can see that. Man. <laughs> I think it adds on to what cartoons. I'm saying about the over explanation of it all. Like, yeah. it explained what's happening in the story there and then it keeps explaining itself like five it, minutes it, later was it kind of just like a like a cover for how just big of an exposition dump it was yeah, yeah. but it kept being an exposition dun- dump granted like an interesting exposition exposition dump but i don't know it just kept adding on to what we were already established from the cartoon in the beginning right. so it's like <laughs> kind of want to see it still i i think you i think you dig it I think, I've I think you'd see what Ken was saying, but I think you'd think enjoy I'll, it more. I'd enjoy it more than Ken. I think Eric like will like man. Ewan McGregor, but I think he'll oh, be I know it like will. It. Yeah. <laughs> I think that'll be about it, though. Huh. But I don't know. I'm curious to see, like I said, how people will like it yeah. as it comes out over the weekend. Well, I know Margot Robbie's hoping that they like it. She's been working on this for a while. Yeah. It's kind of a project of hers since she started being the character, so. Oh, yeah. Well... Let's move on to what might be my most anticipated movie of the entire year. Really? Tell us about it, Eric. Yeah, I'm so take. excited for it. <laughs> He's been really hyped for this for about yeah, a year. Ever since it was first announced. So way back when it was announced that Chris Rock, of all people, was kind of he had this idea of rebooting the Saw franchise, giving it his own spin on it, I guess. And we didn't really hear anything about it since then, and that was like over a year ago. But this week, the trailer for Spiral from the Book of Saw dropped. Yeah, the Book of Saw. <laughs> and I was, I was like, like okay, there's a I book. love this. Not the universe of Saw. I the love book this. Of Saw. I love this. And the trailer, it's this really, I mean, all of the Saw movies always had like this really crappy police subplot that was running um, concurrently with the Saw storyline. But it was always horrible. But this looks like a genuinely good like police drama, like kind of like Seven. Right. It has this really eerie, almost like gross feel to it. And the premise is kind of that somehow, uh, I don't know if somebody's continuing the work of Jigsaw or if it's a new Jigsaw-like person, or if it's a prequel Jigsaw situation. Yeah. Like, this but they're is where targeting he's targeting it. They're targeting his police skills. officers. And, you know, it doesn't really give away a whole lot. Yeah, There's... you don't know if they're dirty cops. You don't know if they're, like, yeah. good cops. You just, you don't know who these victims are. And then Samuel Jackson comes in. You get a nice classic Samuel L. Jackson F-bomb. Yeah. That was great. Yeah. Yeah. M-F-bomb. They went there. M-F-bomb. Nice. Yeah. And, I mean, come on. It's like Chris Rock and Samuel Jackson side by side in a Saw movie. That just sounds like the best thing ever. This just sounds like a wild dream that came true and we're all here for it like i'm actually i'm <laughs> digging this idea i just oh i've now. been the biggest biased saw fan while still admitting that a vast majority of them are terrible sure. movies but i'm just so excited i actually watch the trailer begrudgingly because i don't like horror movies at they're all. comedies i just don't like them at all and <laughs> they're, <comedies. laughs> they're not my kind of comedy <laughs> and i actually thought it was very pleasant surprised how much i liked seeing chris rock in yeah. on it i was like drawn to him and his character and i was like oh i could maybe watch this movie and then they had that like mysterious element and they didn't really play up the doll or the mayhem too much in the trailer because it's just a teaser it was yeah it was just a lot of moody shots be and... like maybe i could watch this oh yeah that's gonna be awesome yeah i mean i know nothing about the saw franchise I have only you know... seen any of them no, I mean, I know about the pop culture, you know, moments and Jigsaw, the name and all that, but I don't know. If someone was like me and saw this, maybe they'd be as interested as I am now. Maybe they'd be more curious, that's for sure. Yeah. Like I, mean, I said, it, I like the Seven vibe that it was yeah, it just it, in like a Saw I'm universe, sure that, because, you know, it it's Chris Rock and he's talked about how he doesn't want to be afraid to inject some bits of humor here and there. Sure. The Saw movies just take themselves so seriously yeah. and they're so bad, which is why they're so funny. But this one just looks like a genuinely really well-made movie. It's yeah. not trying to be sarcastic about itself or anything, but yeah, like I said, isn't afraid to lighten the mood every once in a while. I can't think of seeing Chris Rock in a drama or at least like a serious type role such as this. So Yeah. I'm curious about how that will turn out. He actually looks like uh, yeah, like Cody he said, can do I was pretty good surprised, in drama. Like how natural 
Yeah. And drawn to him. I was in this trailer. Yeah, I thought that was very impressive too. So that was pretty much the only new trailer. Yeah. yeah. Like brand new movie coming out. Yeah. I'm marking my calendar, count down the days. Nice. When does it come out? I think it's in May. Count down the days, sometime in May. My perfect <laughs> summer, yeah, <laughs> my perfect summer <laughs> popcorn flick. May 15th, yeah. Nice. Well. And, and this trailer's on silverscreeninsider.com as is. well it's as many the, others. at the top of the preview preview section where you can find all the trailers on our homepage. <laughs> um, are you going to watch this movie in a theater? Yeah. Yeah. Probably multiple perfect times. Perfect movie theater movie, right? Yeah. I mean, it could now be. that I, and you know the thing that, uh, excites me about it is now that I'm aware of it and that I know it's a thing that's yeah. playing in theaters. Yeah, I'll probably be more inclined to you know stream it on a streaming platform <laughs> later. Right. You know? Yeah. Well, what on earth do you mean, Eric? <laughs> <laughs> well, Kyle found this cool article. I mean, I Thanks. say cool. It's kind of like a no-brainer. Oh, it's just... like <laughs> surprise, surprise. Yeah. The gist of the article is saying that movies that have a theatrical run, like a traditional theatrical release tend to have more streams when they eventually go to a streaming platform yeah. and it's like yeah um if people know it's a thing it's then a they're probably going to be more inclined to seek that right. out amidst the thousands and thousands of other releases that are just yeah. dropped on to like netflix or hulu there's no, there's a reason why i think netflix was pursuing the academy award runs and and it was more beyond just trying to promise creatives a theatrical run. I think that there there's enough data in the transitioning now that they can see that, yeah, you if I'm scrolling through the endless list of movies. Which everybody can relate to. I, what am yeah. I going to watch? I'm like, oh, I think that one was in theaters. I'll give it a yeah, try. Yeah, like, oh, I heard about that. People people seem to like that one, right? Yeah. It just, it just, it... Makes he, it an easier decision to click yeah, it on gives it. it. Yeah, it gives it a sense of legitimacy. Mm -hmm. It makes it stand out. And I think what Netflix was trying to do is they're trying to forge their own path to that sense of legitimacy. Right. Like, if we can win Oscars, then we can slap those on and people will see, ooh, Oscar winning film, and then that'll make it stand out. But... I think that's just not going to work as well as if people just know it was a movie a, that played in a movie theater. Right. Let's be honest. There's a lot of Oscar winning films that no one sees. So I don't think, Very well, true. I yeah. put, do <laughs> put a lot of weight and value behind the Oscar nomination and what it does to legitimize certain movies. Um, I do, it is not the end all be all. And I think no. that coupled with a, a proper theatrical run, not this two week thing that's like, it yeah, played in yeah. theaters. Cause I think people know that if it's just done in two weeks, that that's not long enough to I mean, make they it kind of see through that. Yeah. I think people see through that. They know that that wasn't obviously a good movie if it didn't last. Exactly. I mean, that kind of, yeah, that might even have the adverse effect because I remember there would be movies that I was excited for that, you know, didn't come to my theater right away and then eventually never did because, you know, they were poor movies or people just didn't go see them and they were already out of theaters. Mm -hmm. Right. I was like, oh, okay. I tried to check out um, a movie over last weekend that, um, that I kind of missed in theaters that did very poorly in theaters. And I'm like, well, maybe I will like it. I couldn't get through half of it. <laughs> there was, it just was like I wasted money on writing that. So it's, it's not the all, again, it's not the answer either, just because it, because the, the studios do dump a lot of low quality yeah. stuff trying to garner more interest by yeah. making it theatrical. And all that does is pollute the the, the theater market yeah. when you do that. Um, it's just easier to remember than an endless sea right. of streaming services that have an yeah. endless sea of Well, that made me think about when I, all over. at my old job, um, I work at a, at a video store. And whenever, you know, the the rental wall is basically the same thing as scrolling through Netflix yep. just yeah. in person. But there's so many movies that you will never have heard of. Mm -hmm. But whenever a new release comes out, the thing that was in theaters. Right. It had you know, a whole section like on the rental 80, wall. Like yeah. 90% of rentals are people just renting that. Right. And, and yeah. it doesn't even matter if that movie did uh, like particularly well in theaters. Yeah. When it's on the rental wall, it stands out amongst all of the other stuff oh, yeah. just because... You know, it's it's in people's minds as a movie and not like a it's like the, straight to DVD kind of like thing. It's like also when you went to the rental wall and you saw like 
a hundred copies of something and then you saw, you know, like maybe five copies of something, you're like, well, maybe this is kind of good. And then you saw one copy of something. Yeah. I mean, I'm weird. So I would go for like the one copy thing, but there's no denying that to the vast majority of people, there's a reason, you know, that's, that's the, the most, I guess, legitimate. Yeah. Maybe that is, sounds harsh everybody's, towards the other movies but. everybody's looking for those cognitive shortcuts to making quick emotional decisions so they're looking yeah. for things where they can have a certain base level of knowledge it's kind of so it's called the cognitive dissonance and when we talk about it in politics it's like how you get enough information oh, from yeah. a candidate by just seeing a d or an r behind their name that yeah. actually gives you a certain level of information oh yeah so when you go to the netflix menu or the streaming menu and you see um a whole bunch of movies and you're like i know this one was in theaters it gives you a a little bit of knowledge that this is probably a movie that i'm gonna like just a base level like i'm not gonna be too disappointed just more it's yeah it has a higher chance of being worth my time a little higher quality production value to it and the longer it lasts in theaters, the more people liked it, I will probably yeah. like it. And that's not to say that this is a blanket statement. No. It's always true, but this is just what what happens subconsciously. Right. You can't really deny it. And we've talked a little bit about that with the theatrical box office, that the advent of streaming, our, fe- our fear has always been that they were going to take good product away from theaters mm-hmm. and put it on streaming. Because they the studios can really... like. A, said earlier pollute that theatrical market by putting these low quality what probably should be straight to dvd or streaming Mm -hmm. movies in theaters trying to rein some more money or legitimize them a little bit more so there's this really fine line with putting movies in the theaters where you want to make sure the quality is there you want to make sure they're actually legitimate theatrical releases and not something like Jexy from Lionsgate <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they can't even get through halfway that's like really not yeah. meant that's not a theatrical movie that no, that's really truly a streaming film mm-hmm. I just I also thought it was interesting I think it was in that same article they they kind of do polls of the different demographics and there was there's kind of a cop-out argument going around for a while where it's like young people don't care about movies they don't go to see them anymore right. but what the polls and all of these surveys found is the people who go to the movie, the people who watch a lot of streaming content, see the most movies. Yeah. yeah. So it kind of just boils Including down to people. Theaters. People who, um, place a great deal of a value on their entertainment, they're gonna see it regardless of the medium. Yeah. Um. So I, I just, just yeah I wonder if if the change in that landscape, the number of people that actually are interested in entertainment. Yeah. is shifting everybody likes to think they're interested well there's just so many different types now there's yeah. yeah there's so many different types they're very very like concentrated in their own sh- own kind like oh, yeah. you don't have much overlap you don't have a general it's kind of like you don't have the central type anymore like no. the all audience what we called four quadrant movies mm-hmm. they just they don't happen as often anymore and so you don't think you get these big event films like basically disney's the last of that kind of making that stuff yeah but as as stuff becomes more generalized and more analytical and more to certain graphics like oh if you like we talked about with that ai script thing that's only going to perpetuate that yeah you have to have this kind of cast in this market and i i don't see people like coming together over the types of theater stuff so you get somebody in there that really likes a certain kind of media and then goes and goes and goes. But I don't think the general audience anymore is like, has that propensity to. Yeah, no, it's, it's not, it's not as simple as like, why, why are people not seeing as many movies anymore? I know I have a, like several friends who probably 80, 90% of what they watch is just like YouTube. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And they're not going to go see the move to the movie theater. They're not going to, you know, stream a, peak television series Mm -hmm. because they're just their go-to their default thing is just like youtube that's what they think of when they think of entertainment and you know that's just how it is for a lot of people now there's there's so many different options out there so right well what's funny is that 
the demographic that went to like the fewest amount of movies, they also stream like the fewest amount of stuff as well. Exactly. Right. Like they're not yeah. they're not actually after long form visual entertainment. They're it's just for a matter short of short form quick consumption yeah. entertainment. So quick timing for them. I mean when Quibi comes out, yeah. That's gonna exacerbate that even more. You know, we'll yeah. really for start sure. seeing that. Um yeah, I mean I, I find as I'm a super avid movie going person, even though I haven't been to a movie yet in 2020. <laughs> but I, I'm interested. I know what's coming out. I am mm-hmm. well informed, uh, way above the general audience. I mean, I even have clients that still don't know what's coming up. Like they own movie theaters, and yeah. they're not as in the know. Well, and, that's what Silver Screen Insider is yeah, here for. for. <laughs> but, um, but I even like sometimes don't want to stream something Mm -hmm. i even go to youtube at night or my podcast oh same here i love going to youtube and watching my podcast yeah i love it and some and some nights i just don't feel like a bunch of talking and i want a movie i want more of a story and other times i just want talking about nonsense like i don't want an agenda i just want to hear Yeah. sometimes you don't want a a narrative a story something I don't Sometimes want you the just want to hear human voices. Want to be yeah. a part of the conversation. Yeah, I mean, I want you want jokes. friends. I just want some <laughs> funny banter. I mean, and that goes hand in hand with how with the, like the explosion of podcasts these yeah. past several years. A lot of people are feel the same way. So instead of seeing movies one hundred percent of the time, maybe now, if you split that up between YouTube podcasts and then streaming, streaming and movies, yeah. It's, I probably do ten percent of my time is podcasts. I would say ten percent is video games, and then twenty maybe streaming, and the rest would be movies. So I'm still more heavily. I haven't thought about that movies, but if you start to gauge it, and my podcast is growing, my streaming is diminishing, mm-hmm. and. My movie going has roughly stayed the same. Yeah, be, that 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 would be interesting. I, I'm just imagining like a pie chart, and everybody has their own unique pie chart. Yeah. Of how it's how their entertainment is distributed. Now, when a vi- really good game comes out, like I haven't had a great game since. Oh yeah, no Jedi. If, if uh, fallen, something comes whatever. out, that'll jump up to like seventy <laughs> percent of your time. Jedi fallen something another <laughs> order, right? It's fallen yeah, order. Yeah. yeah. So then it was like seventy uh, percent of the time yeah. will be devoted to that. And I'm, I'm the exact same way. I was talking earlier in the office about how, you you know, yeah, we're in the age of peak television, and everybody's talking about how movies have to step up their game because the best stories are being told on TV series and TV, but. That's I don't doubt that that's probably yeah. true, but I I still I don't I don't know I don't gravitate towards watching a lot of television series. Mm. Yeah, um, maybe I probably watch more miniseries than television series. I watch more reality TV than oh, I watch so much trash reality sh- TV. <laughs> it's the best. My, I wouldn't say mine's trash. It's like mine's HGTV trash TV and My, DIY. I don't know. I just you know Lego Masters is now a thing, <gasps> and I watched that episode it? on Hulu. That's my thing now. Is it and that's so not good? trash. That is like S <laughs> tier. We saw it's the pure commercial gold. for that. And I'm like, Callister, get your butt in here now. That's my six year old son who loves Legos. He, he thinks he's in trouble. He's like, yeah. oh no. I'm like, do you want to watch this with me? He's like, yes. So it's going to be our thing. So yeah, that that's cool. But then I also have my 90 day fiance on the side, <laughs> um, which is, I feel like it's safe to say that that's pretty trashy. I uh, have my sister wives. So, <laughs> so we all have our guilty yeah, pleasures. See, that's, so my pie chart, you know, got to factor in trash reality television, all the yeah. non-trash reality television, right. podcasts, music, streaming, and movies, and video games. Do you, I don't take the time to just sit down and listen to music. I listen to I've, so much music. I've never done that. I'll, although I do enjoy music and I do, I listen to quite a bit in the office and it depends on my mood and stuff, but I, yeah. but it's only ever background. I'm never actively engaged yeah. in music. Music's probably my second most, that would be the second biggest slice of my pie chart. That's so crazy. Yeah. Movies, music, video games, podcasts, s- YouTube streaming. Right. What? I can, well, podcasts I and YouTube put, are kind of yeah, the same. Yeah, put them together because, I mean, I, do you watch anything on YouTube other than your podcasts? I mean, sometimes I'll watch like highlight videos from like a streamer or something. Right. But 80% of my 20% YouTube is podcasts. I would say there's uh, f- 3 to 5% of Twitch streaming, but that's just purely background. Yeah. Like when p- normal people listen to music, sometimes I put a Twitch streamer on. Yeah, yeah. I've never, I would never really like sit down and focus, focus on str- on uh, 
on a Twitch streamer. That's have, always background I stuff. I have kind of a couple times when it was a video game that I'm really interested in. Like I've had a couple streamers play Assassin's Creed when they did the DLCs. Oh, yeah. And those were really fun to watch because... That's kind of like playing it, it's, you know. It's almost like a story. When they play yeah. it just to get through the story, then it's... And it goes a little faster and they're not hunting around for all the treasures like i am <laughs> it's a, it's a little bit more enjoyable to watch yeah no what are yours kyle mm, well movies is definitely the big one like theatrical releases for sure um i don't stream many shows or movies anymore these days just because there's way too much content yeah i wonder if that would be at the bottom almost at the bottom for me now do you podcast i do podcast um i don't have like a full library of them. I only have like a slug few, but I right. yeah, usually here. am always like trying to find a podcasts channels. during work yeah. or yeah, or drives like while traveling or something. So that's probably like in the middle. I have my few podcasters that I like. Yeah. I usually don't. You have your go-tos. Yeah. My yeah. go-tos. Mm-hmm. And they're usually Maybe comedians. like three or four. Cause yeah. I want yeah. Comedian laugh. podcasts are the best. They yeah, are they so are. good. Yeah, yeah, and now every single one of them has one. Guys, <laughs> not to change the subject, but Ken said that Ali Wan was in Birds of Prey, and she was not funny. No, that is yeah, true. Explain that, no Kyle. Butt licking jokes. That no is funniness. <laughs> I was like, you had Ali Wan in your movie, and you didn't have her make a joke about licking butts. I'm I like, agree. Come on. I agree That's about that. All these characters that. are zany, except for Ali Wan, <laughs> and it makes no sense. Like what? What a waste. She was I'm so disappointed. She was like the that. only straight and narrow character, and I'm like, what? That that was weird to me. I I will give, I will give Ken a good point for yeah. that. <laughs> that I took love, me out of the movie. I love her. It didn't take me out, but in the specials. back of my mind, I was like, what 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 is what is happening? Why are you not doing your thing? <laughs> yeah. Why are you not funny? I love when movies <laughs> like this, like have a cameo from like a comedian or just somebody who's known to be funny. Mm-hmm. And even if they are supposed to be playing a really straight and narrow character, like you said, they still have just like a weird quirk to them or yeah. like their cadence is weird or they're just there's something to them that makes them funny yeah you know yeah i mean and it's also fine for comedians to try dramas or serious roles but oh, yeah. for this type of movie though you think it's not that yeah you <laughs> no. ali ali Wan should not try to have like that and maybe it wasn't her choice i don't know maybe yeah. she thought it was gonna happen and then it didn't probably but... just like yeah i got money yeah it was true. Like a, an it afternoon was wor- a worth of work <laughs> Yeah, you could say you were in Birds of Prey, so that's cool. But <laughs> that that was an interesting uh, choice for like a serious, serious quote unquote role right. in. I don't know. What were we talking that about was a good before point. that? Sorry, I got so distracted. Our pie charts, about. pie charts, podcasts, yeah. distribution Sweet. of comedians. Yeah. So what we're saying is no duh for this yeah. research. <laughs> but, it's good research that people should know about, no, but it's it, no duh for us. It also legitimizes things we've been saying. Yeah. Theatrical releases matter. The theater industry it, exhibition is important. It's still thriving. Streaming needs it as much as... Yeah, they may not want to admit know, it. They but want... They need it. Streaming is great for television, You're, though. Like, this, that makes sense. Right. And it's why television has boomed so much. Right. But when it comes to movies, it, it's more that... They need the theatrical format, yep, the exhibition I format. I agree. So I liked seeing that maybe studios will wake up to that they can't just dismiss theatrical partnerships anymore. No. And they're never going to be able to cut them out completely. <laughs> yeah. But no you matter know, how much Disney wants to. But many directors <laughs> yeah. are still going to be looking at Netflix just because they get a lot more control. Well, yeah, and which, and which Netflix, makes sense to a degree. Netflix has the money. They're the ones spending the money right now. They have the money, but yet they're weirdly bankrupt. Yeah. <laughs> like they have a lot Are of money to owe. The, the movie, what is it? Movie Pass? Oh, <laughs> oh Movie Pass. Yeah, yeah. That, that's Are they going down, down that route where they're <laughs> like, we'll just spend our way out of this hole? No. <laughs> I think Netflix will be a lot better. If we just dig deep enough, we'll pop out the other pass. side. <laughs> Just ignore the problem no, and everything Netflix will be okay. Will, Netflix will be fine. They yes. are huge. You know, too big to fail. Disney yeah. Disney Plus had what twenty eight million subscribers since yeah. it, since it started, and that was in November. Yeah, so which yeah, is first week of November, I think. Which is massive. Although I think they're in a lull now. Everybody has gotten over their Mandalorian fix, and there's no new yeah, yeah. series I for think a while. One of Marvel's first shows is going to be in the summer. Is that? The I think that's when they announced it just recently. Winter Soldier Falcon one. It might be, yeah. So until the, then, it's going to be in a lull. I, they, and Mandalorian's coming out in they were like the fall, Wanda October. Vision, yeah. 
and WandaVision's not coming out till like December. Yeah. I haven't even opened my Disney Plus app since I finished the Mandalorian. It's been a few weeks for me, actually. I should probably cancel it. Probably. <laughs> but the Mandalorian is only 10 more months. Or well, I'll nine? make a new, I'll re-up then. You'll yeah. make a new email? Yes. <laughs> I'll be like, strictly for Mandalorian at gmail.com. Yeah. <laughs> the, the guys behind the computer are like, hmm, that's suspicious. <laughs> nah, I'm sure it's okay. I have not seen Mandalorian. I have not got the Disney Plus app. The Baby Yoda Funko Pop is now the best-selling Funko Pop in history. Of and it's not even it out is. yet. I don't. I just Wait, what? don't yeah. have an attachment yet. It's because you haven't seen it. I, I've seen Gotta see that little guy in action. I've seen clips. It's cute, but... You gotta have the full momentum and context of the episode. You can't watch know. clips. I've seen clips. I, I agree seen... with Eric, but I don't think it's Cody's cup of tea. I, I don't, I don't yeah. know if she would dig the show that much. It's a good show. Especially but... when they beat up Baby Yoda. I don't want It's the that. funniest <laughs> thing I've ever seen. That is funny. hilarious. Yeah, Jason Sudeikis just wails on him. But you don't see him. He's like all bundled up. He's swaddled and he's like... He's Cloth. warm. Yeah, he's warm and cozy. He's obviously very squishy. Plus, they get their curmudgeons. I hope so. They do. I want torturous, torturous deaths. I think they just get wow. shot. No, <laughs> it's not enough for me. <laughs> oh, I know. More bloodthirsty blood in your yeah. <laughs> need for revenge. Yes. Oh, but well. I haven't done it yet. <laughs> haven't done it yet. I don't. And none of the Marvel stuff looks interesting to me. No, I'm not gonna watch. Did you that. see where um the the Doctor Strange multi universe lost its director over creative differences? I'm like, quit yeah, that was doing a while this, ago, Disney, and then they quit. and then they got Sam Raimi who because yeah. the fir- what was his name Scott Derrickson yeah who did Scott the first Derrickson one. who did the first one he uh, there were reports that the sec- the Doctor Strange multiverse of madness um was supposed to take a lot more of a horror approach yeah. And then he left because of creative differences. And then they hire Sam Raimi, who literally built his career off of insanely gory horror films. Yeah. So it's like, oh. I mean, but he, he also did, did Spider Man. Yeah, that's what most people probably know him for now. Yeah. Oh, I've but, seen so many comments where they're like, oh, he did Spider Man 3. I'm out. And I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> he also people. did Spider Man 2. He yeah. did, yeah. He and did Army one of Darkness, the best. And comic Evil Dead. Movies. And Evil Dead 2. Uh, so quit your whining. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. People are maroons. I'm just saying. I just. The, it is so ridiculous at this point the director turnover mm-hmm. with the company with, with like, Disney. Yeah, yeah. At this it doesn't point, happen too much with Marvel. The but this directors, is, yeah. it's obviously it you. happened with Edgar Wright. He, they kicked it him. Out. He left. Yeah. He left Ant Man. Um, that was like early Marvel, though. No, it was. It's it's it, still a symptom of in, Disney's inability to like. Agree. Yeah, yeah. Really yeah. let them do their own thing. Yeah. Right. Right. They just can't let go of. Mm-hmm. The control and they don't they're like we want you to be creative but not too creative but we want you to be creative enough that we get praised for your little bit of yeah. creativity <laughs> oh praise disney we taking don't chances wanna, on these risky we directors. don't want to be criticized that we're <laughs> vanilla anymore come on it's so dumb it's just frustrating yeah. i think that's why i've kind of lost interest too i'm just Oh, I absolutely have. Well, yeah, like I said, once you know, Rise of Skywalker came out, and then The Mandalorian's over. That was my big stake in Disney. Yeah. So now, I don't. I mean, I don't know. So now you're just coasting. I'm just coasting. I'm I watching my you're other stuff. You're having a good time. I'm, I'm watching my original right. cinema. I'm excited for Onward because I think I am, that yeah, I looks I am. super cute. It's Pixar, so you know it's going to be emotionally good, and make you probably cry. And then yeah, that tagline makes me want to cry. And then I. I'm not interested in Mulan. I don't like the whole witch. I don't like her having long. Oh, we've ripped on Mulan a lot. Long, curly. <laughs> I just watched the final Mulan trailer. I and I'm like, God, this is not what I wanted for my Mulan movie. Well, I thought it looked fine. <laughs> but uh, I, I remember what you said. Yeah. I get Ugh. it. You're so neutral, Kyle. You're so good. What are we going to do when I mean, Eric's gone? Until you, until you see it. like It's just yeah. going to be me being like, I hate this. And then Kyle being like, yeah, I understand your point. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> that is that is You are entitled to, to your own opinion. I can't tell you how many friends are so annoyed with me about that. They call, me, they call me Switzerland for a reason. <laughs> gotta be opinionated. That's just like your opinion, That's man. why we need three people here. Because, oh, very true. Yeah. You're too neutral. Oh, 100%. Do you even have opinions? Sometimes. <laughs> Maybe that's why you're like so forgiving about certain movies. Yeah. Well, they tried really hard, so I give it to them. I could see where they were going. Yeah. I could see where they were coming from. 
It was still fun. I'm just I'm just teasing you. Like, no, no, I know. They killed a kid in the first five minutes. That movie is dead to me. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm like, well, let's just hear them out. <laughs> I'm like, hey. Let's just see if there was a point to this. And Eric's like, yeah, more baby murder. <laughs> <laughs> if it's good. Eric just... <laughs> Eric thinks all baby murder is good. Again, if it's good. I don't think I've seen a movie with an explicit baby murder that I thought was pulled off poorly. That's how that's how I'll phrase that's it. That's a hot take. <laughs> I've seen maybe like three baby murders and all three were very well done. They're so glad they you served don't the, have kids. They served the story. <laughs> I've seen three baby murders. <laughs> it's a good thing we don't do clips of like the show because that would be a right. hell of a clip. <laughs> take me out of context. Yeah. I don't care. Let's talk about the Oscars. Yeah. Is this going to be our final no. Oscar talk? Final? No, we're going to have to no. talk about the results. Oh, we have that's to talk a good about point. The results, but but we since the all, Oscars are this Sunday, we all cl- um, got our Oscar nominee checklist, which you can get off of silverscreeninsider.com. Mm-hmm. So many resources over there. Oh, my so God. nice. Yeah, plenty. It, you know what I like about our checklist is they're just, they're not all smushed together, and the most important ones are at the top of the page, <laughs> which is awesome. True. Um, and I take it that's where you'd want to start? Yes. Page, yeah, we all kind of took one. turns choosing what we think's going to win and then also having our say on what we personally I just want, want to win. what yeah. we want to win. And apparently, I just want Quentin Tarantino to win everything. Because <laughs> that's the only thing you've seen. <laughs> yeah. He made a, he did make a good movie. You can't movie. deny that. He made a good movie that I actually liked. <laughs> it's a very Except good for movie. 20 minutes on the weirdo ranch. Love that scene. Oh, can't. that scene alone is going to give Brad Pitt an Oscar. Yeah, that's what everybody's saying. What the twenty minutes? Oh, one hundred. Yeah, it's that's like, yeah, that's like his character's essence. I that's love like the ultimate. I love the scene where he fights. Um, Bruce Bruce Lee. Lee. <laughs> I thought you were just gonna say he fights. I love that scene I love when where he fights. He fights. <laughs> he's like my fists are considered lethal weapons. He's yeah. like, all right. Funny enough, that's <laughs> he throws the throws him in the car. <laughs> funny enough, that's like the one scene that some people hate in that movie because they're oh. like, oh, they're hurting. Bruce Lee's legacy. I Meanwhile, I'm like, it. I don't know. I thought it was funny. I think it's hilarious. And then the, it's not supposed the to be a real wife. It's like thing. <laughs> oh, I love all that. Yeah, it's a fantastic movie. So let's just okay. Let's just do a rapid fight. We'll go through the categories and we'll all say what we personally want yeah. to win. What okay. we personally want to win? Best yes. picture. Come on, guys. Uh, well, I, I'm. I would be happy if Parasite or Once Upon a Time in Hollywood won. And for me, it, I'd love Parasite or Jojo Rabbit to win. And I want Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Best director. I personally want Quentin Tarantino to win, but I'll also be happy if Bong Joon-ho wins. I think Bong Joon-ho will win, and I would love that. <laughs> I want Quentin Tarantino to win. He needs, <laughs> has he ever got best director? Nope. He needs a best director. He's been nominated, I think. Yeah. But he's Probably. Won. He's won two original think... screenplay awards, but he's never won a directing award. Right. Did he get nominated for Django, probably? Do you want I me to think check? so. I think he was... I mean, he... He won the original screenplay for that. He might have been nominated for Best Director for that. He's just he's just so consistent. Yeah. And, and everybody one, loves him. Come on. He's so likable. This is the one that's most um like open like open to to other people. Like you don't have to be just a Quentin Tarantino yeah. violence love like love fest. He um, was nominated Best Director for accessible. Pulp Fiction. Yeah. All right. And cool. he didn't win? No. No, Forrest Gump won. That was a big upset year. Even though I, yeah. first I one's like, great. I love, I love Forrest yeah. Gump. Okay, so we're all hoping Quentin it's a good Tarantino year. wins. Best actor. I mean, I want Adam Driver to win. Same. Um, I <laughs> want Joaquin Phoenix to win, and he will. I, I think he will. He won one. He, I think ninety-eight percent will. will win. For how much he carried the movie, yeah, he, yeah, yeah he'll he'll okay. probably win that one. Best actress. I want Saoirse Ronan to win for Little Women. That makes me happy. Yes, she's so What good. do you want? I decide I, I wanted Scarlett Johansson to win, but I think Renee Zellweger has so much love at I this point. I want Charlize Theron to win because I just like her stink face, Megan Kelly. It's a like, good look. stink face. Yeah, it's resting B-word <laughs> face. <laughs> Supporting actor, Brad Pitt. All it's going to oh, be yeah. Brad Pitt. All the I way. wanted him There's to win. There's just no yeah. competition. That scene in the where he fights, so good. <laughs> <laughs> it it's so good. <laughs> I was laughing at myself because I the picture of him throwing Bruce Lee to the car. It was just a terribly timed pause. <laughs> I know I could could go on. It was so good. No, that scene is it seems so good. <sighs> really funny. I wanted uh, Margot Robbie. Only because um I didn't 
I didn't see anything else. <laughs> I didn't I want, see Bombshell, but I she, want, I I want she Florence was good. Pugh she win. has the one Oscar clip, but other than that, it's just, a fine performance. You know, part of me doesn't want Little Women to win because it already won a bunch of awards in like the 90s. What is with this sudden hate for Little Women? I don't, I don't know. People, it's I've been hate. seeing she so many. Even seen it. I've been seeing so many anonymous Oscar It already won a bunch like, in the 90s. <laughs> it was like 30 years ago. I, just, I no, don't know. It was I, like 10 years ago. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, anyway, um, I want Florence Pugh to win. She's fantastic. Florence Pugh should be nominated for Midsommar. She should win for that. I agree. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I think Laura Dern will win. But I'd love for Scarlett Johansson to win this one too. She's nice. the she is yeah. like one of my favorite things about Jojo Rabbit. She I had a dream about her last night. Nice. She was like good she, dream, she, bad dream. It was it was hilarious. Dream. I was like in a big city and she was a waitress and she was bringing us our food and I was trying to order but I didn't know what to order and then there was like cultural differences and she was teasing me because they had never heard of what a ham and cheese sandwich was and then she was like that, <laughs> that would be Scarjo. she'd be like that would be like if I asked if you could make me an egg sandwich with pastrami and I was like that sounds good and then she started laughing at me She's in like, oh, dream, Eric. You wanted the most bland. Just a ham and cheese sandwich, yes. please. I was, I was like in a big group of people at like a long table in a restaurant and they had all ordered and they're all waiting for me to order. And she was just standing there with like the notepad and the pen. She's like, come on, what do you want? I was like, I don't know what I'm, what, what do people order in this town? What do people order in this dream? <laughs> like, Take salad and pastrami, apparently. I guess. It's it Scarjo's so favorite sandwich, guys. <laughs> Everyone knows this. So, yeah. Where are we at again? Uh, Original screenplay. I would love to see Parasite win this one. I would too, but I'm a Quentin lover. I I think Quentin will take it. Yeah. I think Quentin's going to take it too. I think Parasite will take it, but we'll see. Adapted screenplay. I would love it. I personally want Greta Gerwig to win it, but I'd also be happy if Taika Waititi wins it, and he probably will. I put Taika on there because I love Taika. I'd love for Taika to win, but I got a weird feeling deep in my gut that Joker's gonna win this There's one. There's just no way. Just, if it did, don't, that would actually. I'm make sorry, it I don't trust the Academy anymore these days, and I just got a weird suspicion that it's gonna happen. It's just a terrible I script. A, I don't have a lot of um, opinions on the next one, except for best original song, and I want Into the Unknown to win. So my bad. favorite original song. I don't know. I don't remember the I'm Gonna Love Me Again song, probably because yeah. I left before the I credits. Would, I would be okay if that one won. So I would I would probably say Into the Unknown just because I remember it. This I is w- one of the categories yeah. I care least about, in all honesty. But yeah, sure, that song can win. Rock, I just Rock wish Man song that it win. was Into the Unknown by Panic at the Disco. I don't really care for the Indina <laughs> Menzel. Like. What if they did a duet? I, no, I want, I want Panic at the Disco to all win right. this one. All right. Gross. <laughs> no, it's fine. Love but... me, Brandon Urie. <laughs> At least make it sound convincing. No, it's fine. <laughs> His I don't think it's fine. Into the unknown <laughs> is so good. Oh, I could listen to that song a hundred times. You probably do. I have. Yes, <laughs> I have already. Uh, for original time. score, I would be. I want. I want Joker to win. I thought about it between that and 1917, but I don't. know I'm kind of gonna. If I have to pick one, I would say Joker. Joker's score is one of the best parts of that movie, and I think it will win. I would love for 1917 to win. I think it, it was more crucial to the, its overall story. Personally. Fair. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, like, same to, same with Cody. I don't really have an opinion on a lot of these, but for cinematography, I would love if The Lighthouse won. Oh, same. That would make me so happy. Oh, that would be such a sneaky win. I would be okay with that one because, it, you know, black and white is always really hard to pull off, especially for modern audiences. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I'd be fine if Once Upon a Time won because they did have this like really warm vintage glow about the whole film. Oh yeah, and I it's the and, magic of film, and it it's what made it feel vintage and feel mm-hmm. part of the time. So yeah. I feel like they actually really did a good job with that. Yeah, well, yeah, I agree with that. They're all great contenders. Um, but 1917 is most definitely going to win it. What do you guys think about production design? Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, easily. Yeah. Yeah, if not, it would go to 1917, but I, I agree with Eric. It's Once Upon a Time. They just, like, rebuilt L.A. <laughs> like, yeah, pretty much. Made it p- however long ago that is now. Same with costume design. I think Once Upon a Time will win that, too. Can't do math. Costume design. <laughs> <laughs> costume design. I like These are the things I don't really have an opinion yeah. about. Um, I love in that anonymous Oscar ballot, I think, Oh yeah, we gotta on talk about Hollywood those a little Reporter. Bit. 
where the one guy was like the, not giving it to Jojo Rabbit because he's like, how can you really reinvent the Nazi costume? <laughs> <laughs> so come on. And it's like, like well, <laughs> they technically did. Yeah, a lot of those like anonymous ballots, own... I was shocked at how... My, oh, they sound I, clueless. I was telling Kyle, my theory is that since everybody, their screeners are able to be streamed now, I think they were all just like on their phones, emailing, doing business while it was streaming in the background. And then they looked and up they and they like, glanced up and like, I don't know what's going on. This movie is dumb. Yeah. So <sighs> that was so. That's my but theory. I, I thought it so maybe dumb. made a good point, like about the Jojo Rabbit. I just For costume design, yeah. I mean, yeah, they're, they're just a bunch of Nazi outfits. I give it a little more credit than that, but I see the point. I just, I, mean, I just did that. <laughs> I just did just that a, neutral thing. It's a lot of swastikas. <laughs> yeah. I guess uh, Thomas and McKenzie's outfit's kind of cool. Um, or like, sure, <laughs> Jewish girl rags. <laughs> but <laughs> that was the name of that was the name of it. They're you very know, chic though. <laughs> very chic. Uh, uh, visual effects, guys. Um. 1917 will win, but I'd be happy with Avengers Endgame personally. There's and nothing. yes, that that is. I fan would not. Bias. I would be so angry if Avengers or Star Wars won that because literally every blockbuster has those exact right. same effects. Those are not yeah. breaking new territory. Irishman was done so poorly. I don't. I don't yeah, why is oh, that? Yeah, that's a, a nominee. Yeah. That's and that's a mistake. In Lion King, you can't animate animals. They don't put emotion through that was as realistic a- yeah as realistic as they were they're not emo- right. they're, they're so not filled with emotion you have to go with 1917 on this yeah, yeah i think the academy will yeah especially when it's all done like practically and in the moment like when that yeah. plane like flies effects. at them and crashes yeah. like mere feet from them yeah like whew, how they pull that off it is it is a- gotta be so much legal stuff like if that pilot just accidentally like bumped his steering wheel up a bit his propeller would have like shredded those boys yeah. and the fact that they're trying to do it in pretty much one take format it's oh, yeah. yeah it's impressive in itself for sure crazy i think 1917 will also get sound editing and sound mixing but yeah i'm not too i'm not familiar at all in this type of territory so i'm just kind of going based on what everyone's saying yeah same with editing um 4v ferrari's pretty much expected to get it and i wouldn't have a problem with that but yeah I would like if Parasite won that just because of how, I don't know, just how perfectly paced everything was. Every shot was held. Parasite's not nominated for... For film editing, it oh. is. Yeah. yeah I was looking at sound editing. Yeah, we moved sorry. on from the sound Oh, sorry. Stuff. <laughs> we moved on. Okay. For Tell editing. us what you thought, though. <laughs> <laughs> on none of these films I saw. Well, well Once well, Upon a Time is in all these... Well, not it's in the, it's in Okay, it's in the sound categories. <laughs> I think... Uh, I'm going to go with what I read in one of the um, Oscar ballots that Jojo Rabbit should win editing because the joke oh. wouldn't land if it didn't have the precise cuts. It's true. There's That's a good point. Comedy is very yeah. underrated uh, when it comes to editing. Yeah. So yeah. much of it. It's about it's, timing. Yeah, the comedic timing is just built in the editing room. All right. Yeah. I'll, I'll root for that too. So I'm going to go with that one. All right. You know cool. what? I'm going to make it official. I didn't write anything down. Oh, but she there, took out the marker. Jojo Rabbit. There it is. Ooh. Sound mixing and sound editing. I don't know. International. I'm going to go with Parasite. Oh, yeah. There's just no yeah. way that doesn't win. Um, I think it's for sure going to win that, but it's not going to win. As much as I would love it, I don't think it's going to get Best Picture because of it. I, I think that I, I think the Oscars tipped their hat <laughs> accidentally. <laughs> I released don't, that it did win Best Picture. I don't trust them. That oh, was, you mean that because was of funny. what they did on Twitter? Yeah. Yeah, so for those who don't know, weirdly... The like the, the official Academy Awards like Twitter page, um, posted what was supposed to be their own predictions, right. which I don't think they've ever done before. So you mean Why the would winners? they do that? <laughs> and then they like immediately deleted it. They took it right. down right afterwards, and they were like, oh, "Whoops, that was uh, that was just one of our fans' right. this is predictions. We accidentally posted theirs." So here's a couple <laughs> things I think ha- maybe happened. So the Academy mm. doesn't actually count Oscar ballots. That's done by a third party uh, vote counting agency. Yep. And that is super secretive. The trophies don't even have the winners on them. So there's just no way. I mean, they're sealed envelopes until the point of of the show. So there's no way the Academy, I'm sure, got a heads up on who the winner was. In because of that, they probably have so a lot of social media posts pre built in that w- under various scenarios that they maybe you know given what 
is winning in the other in the guilds, they probably have an idea and rumbling and stuff. So they probably make some pre-made social media posts. And they probably posted one of those and by accident made it active and and then yeah. So so it could le- be legitimate. They I would, did. They did have Parasite listed yeah. as best picture. Yeah. So Parasite. They don't have, even trust their own academy. No, I think they um, <laughs> probably think it. There's probably a top three that they do for yeah. these things, you know, three or four. Well, especially um, yeah. with all the preferential uh, voting for Best Picture. Yeah. So they probably have um, their backups, and yeah. one of those just probably got um, unleashed by accident. It's just a silly flub. Yeah. Or it's real. <laughs> or it's real. And we got it ruined for us. Oh, too bad. Excuse me. And the rest of these categories are the things that nobody really knows, like... Yeah, I mean, I took pics. You can see them. I Live think, action, same short, with Eric. short film, short animated. I yeah. haven't seen right. any of those. Oh, I mean, I just paid based on word of mouth, but I didn't give any insight. I don't know anything. So, but best animated feature. Mm. I chose mm. How to Train Your Dragon: The Hidden World because it made me cry. I would love for that. I to chose Toy Story Four because it made me cry and it moved me. I chose Klaus <laughs> because it almost made me cry, but it was so darn delightful. Do you cry being so neutral? Uh, I get close when it comes to movies. I, there hasn't been many in a while that have done that for me, though. Oh, I can cry. If it's good, there's nothing I love more mm-hmm. than crying at a movie. Even keeled. Is his name Klaus in the movie? I still am hung up on or this. Like, I don't... I, I'm trying to... I keep saying Klaus, but Santa it's Santa Klaus? I've never heard it's that before. Santa. I don't know, but Klaus, Klaus just is. doesn't sound right. Did you, have you seen pictures from it? It's definitely Santa. Oh, I know it is Santa, but maybe it's Santa's alter ego, Klaus. Maybe. Maybe on the downtime, he's just Klaus. Is Santa the main character, or is that that like scrawny elf dude? It's the scrawny mailman. Oh. oh. The North Pole mailman? Aww. Yeah. Kind of like um, That's beautiful. Arthur Christmas. <gasps> oh, mailman as in like he's got to deliver the letters that kids write to yeah. Santa? Aw. That Let's sounds see? so sweet. <laughs> It's yeah. so good. I think that's why I like Arthur Christmas so much, because Arthur works in the mail room and answers all the letters. Nice. Maybe I'll watch Klaus. Oh, you Klaus should. I tonight. think you will. I think you will no, love this movie. Watch Arthur Christmas first, then watch Klaus, because Arthur Christmas is so much better. You haven't seen Klaus, really? Is it Oscar nominated? Mm-hmm. Is it actually? I don't no. know. Okay. Are you sure? Okay. Yeah, I'm <laughs> positive. Are you sure it hasn't never gotten? An pretty Oscar? sure that was like a pretty middling reviewed <gasps> movie. When it okay, came out. I got it. I'm gonna figure it out now. Could be I do want to know if so Arthur Christmas good, is nominated? It is definitely part of our Christmas repertoire. Maybe I'm thinking of Arthur and the Invisibles. What's that one? It's one where like that, that kid shrinks down, friends becomes friends with ants. I think. Oh. Maybe. <laughs> I don't no, know. I don't know. <laughs> it's a weird one. Faster, Kyle. Faster. Let's see. Golden Globes, any awards. Uh, I don't see any Oscars. Darn no it. Oscars. Ah. So ha. Well, <laughs> but no, Sony it's... didn't pay enough to get a nomination <laughs> the it's way now Netflix gonna... did. It's now going to be one of the <laughs> Christmas movies really I watch. Good. <laughs> it's gonna now. It's now a Christmas, Christmas classic staple. for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's so great when you f- stumble upon a new Christmas movie that you just know is going to be like part of your tradition. Yeah. I don't know, but I do think Toy Story 4 will win. So do we think all of the, all of the ones we want to win will win? No. no. <laughs> but we will tune in and find out. But gosh darn it, if we're right, <laughs> then we will if bring right, about it. I, mean, I, I have a pretty good track record in previous years, but there's always, I have not. <laughs> there's always there's always a few that it's always it's it's usually like the, the live action shorts and things where sure. it's just pure guess. Yeah. Guys, I remember being so upset that Avatar didn't win that I wrote like a blog post back in the day about how <laughs> angry it was and how to touch the Academy was. And it's the Academy of Art, a motion picture, arts and sciences, and that they should have gotten the award because of their technical. Like, I went off on it. And now I. Like, Did it age well? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I loved her locker. I was happy when that won just so bad i don't I, but i got so fired up that was like the last time i got super fired up about oscars it kind of gets a bad rap nowadays like avatar is me. avatar isn't a horrible movie oh it's a great movie yeah it's just a very familiar story and for yeah. whatever reason that's the one movie with a familiar story that people choose to yeah they point bash on out. it way too much right now granted it probably didn't age well with what you wrote maybe but <laughs> why are you so fired up because I thought. I think a lot of people were at the time. Because I am really? always I a proponent so. that the that was like the husband wife showdown. I remember that that the best picture should really be the one that most people went and saw that year because a component of the 
exhibition is getting butts and seats and the films that get more butts and seats really should be a step above the art of the film a little I bit because don't agree with so that. should avengers endgame be a best picture nominee yeah it should all right but why she said yes but i'm on board but, the, <laughs> but that's not that's not the academy's response like obligation though that's like something that like you're missing that's like an obligation that you're projecting onto them when that I was never like part missing, of what they were trying what? to do i i I kind of just struggle with this a little bit because I get the art of it. You're creating art, visual art. It's an award that's mainly for the visual art storytelling. Yes. But if no one enjoys it or, you know, it's like a, I'm not trying to make it a popularity contest, but I kind of am. I'm really torn. Well, about if this. so many people are like fired up about who well, I, but then gets the, nominated for the Oscars and like they all go out and watch the Oscars, like you would think that they would want to see the movie that, that they, they see in theaters in theaters well, that they actually the, saw the, it, the, the the inevitable easy counter argument yeah. to that would be like who would really think transformers dark of the moon should be best picture <laughs> yeah. you know like i'm not saying they should always win but they should always be nominated there should be some legitimate you're saying there should be a best popular film category <laughs> <laughs> i should i think it should be a best picture nominee Every year, we should nominate the one that actually got people to physically come out of their houses and come to the theater and enjoy the film and saw repeat viewings. That should be rewarded somehow. I mean, I, I can see that. I think that's what the Golden Globes is for. <laughs> but like, if I'm being it's honest. just so hard. It's just <laughs> yeah. so hard to tell why so many people turned out for a certain movie. Because sometimes a lot of people turn out for a really good movie. And sometimes a lot of people turn out for a really just horrible well, movie. Right. But the fact is they turn out and and I don't know if it's a mar- if it's the marketing uh, maybe a, it's a marketing award I don't know I haven't I just have always felt that you know they lose something by not rewarding films that people actually see but I think it, since it's such an uh, artist centric um award show like that's not their intentions to think oh, about not, audiences yeah that's and what i'm saying that, that's never releases. been what they were trying to do meanwhile like golden globes is that i mean cats was trying to get <laughs> win like best music and no one saw that movie yet not even critics it just you you wor- worry about like where the industry is going in the future if you if you don't not pander, but like I was about cater to, say <laughs> to the audience in a way. Like you're making movies because you love it and you have cre- you have a story to tell. But isn't there a part of it that you want to make money and share this fi- this story with people? And if nobody's coming and well, they make money. Well, regardless. It's like trying to predict the <laughs> stock market. You never are. You're never going to know which movie is going to do well or why. And a lot of times, even if these movies make a ton of money that year, they're forgotten about before the year is even over or the next year. So the Oscars are trying to reward a movie that, you know, will stand the test of time, I think. And granted, a lot of Best Picture winners. Don't. I, I will never watch again. Yeah. But that's that's kind of what they're trying to do. And sometimes a movie that makes a billion dollars totally stands the test of time. Like with Return of the King. Rotten Tomatoes has like a like a tournament bracket style thing com- facing or pitting all of the best picture winners against each other. Hmm. I don't know who won, but the top four Return of the King was in there. Everybody loves those movies. Yeah. They made billions of dollars. The best picture winners. And we still talk about them today. I guess in this polarized day and age, if you have something media wise that brings a lot of people together i mean even if it's like super fleeting even if it's super fleeting because the the point was that everybody experienced that together and like i said it got people up and out and spending money and to the theater and it just did more than i get that but sometimes like for endgame i totally agree endgame probably should have been nominated for best picture (gasps) like like i mean it made it's it broke for box office history but I'm it's so happy <laughs> there are a lot of movies that make a billion dollars like lion king but that wasn't an event that people were excited about and talking right. to each other about endgame was totally that yeah like it was in the public conversation for avatar weeks avatar was that too. avatar was totally for like sure that. so i'm saying that that's where the disconnect i think is there, yeah. there are those big films that make a lot of i'm not saying reward i mean knives out right knives out yeah. could have been could have been one but just little women kind of was it just made 100 mil i just don't feel like 100 is that much anymore <laughs> well i mean <laughs> yeah, great, any movie but... can make 100 mil i'm just saying like a lot of no, people i totally i that. get i get what you're saying it's it's just 
I, and Avatar legitimized it even more for me at the time because they pushed the boundaries of the technical science of filmmaking at for that sure. time. Yeah. And that should have been rewarded as well. They yeah, didn't basically I, I agree. invented new technology for that film and that was not Did it win technical awards? Oh, at sure. the Oscars? I'm sure, I'm it, sure did. it did too. I think it won cinematography and it won visual picture. effects and all that stuff. Yeah. But yeah, that was the year where it was like, ooh, ex-husband and wife, James Cameron and Catherine Bigelow face to face. Who's going to yeah. win? If Catherine oh, Bigelow wins, was... she'll be the first female in history to win. And so yeah. some people think that's why she, oh. why it won. But I mean, mm-hmm. I personally like The Hurt Locker probably more than Avatar, but I I do agree Avatar is infinitely more significant in like the history of cinema. I just got so fired up over that it's bringing but all those old feelings back to post about it. i did i used to have my own blog post where i put all my movie reviews and stuff and <laughs> under an alias i remember one of my classes that's awesome one of my classes in design school had to be for some reason you had to like make your own blog i guess i don't even know what the reason for it was so i kind of was like doing movie review type stuff it, it was yeah. all bad like that because i was just like starting to try that stuff out but i that just reminded me of that yeah I think we all go through a time in our 20s where we're like, we can... I can be know, a writer. I could be a writer. And, <laughs> and I did. Very I'm still going through it. <laughs> but it's time consuming and I just didn't have the time to keep it up. Ever and since then, that day, you were just so disillusioned. You and never then I went always back. found out that I was writing my reviews right after I'd seen it. Oh, yeah. You, it's a timing issue. Yeah. But that then emo- I those felt initial different. emotional reactions. Yeah. I felt so differently later. I'm like, ugh. That's why I always try and see movies multiple times. Like, because I'm shocked sometimes at how much my opinion changes. Yeah. Like, oh, how quick it changes. Yeah. Yeah. Like with Rise of Skywalker, hated it. And I see it again, and it's like, okay, it was a terrible movie, but I'm not like offended by it. And then the third time, it's like, "Mm, I think it's not my favorite. But it's Star Wars. I thought we got a lot out of our conversation about the things we did like and then the things we wish we had seen after we got the Trevorrow script yeah. leaked. <laughs> that was very cathartic for me. I, I've, I've gotten to a place where I'm at peace with it. Right. It's not. It's probably the worst Star Wars movie. It probably is, actually. Um, but I'm not And that thinking that's about it. I'm not dwelling on it. It's worse yeah. than the prequel. <laughs> I forgot about that movie completely, honestly. Right, I haven't thought about that movie in the only part weeks. I think about in that movie was I just love that scene where she puts the lightsaber behind her and he That's grabs cool. it. That, yeah, that is pretty that, cool. It does that shrug? That yeah. was like a trending thing for a little oh, bit. Like, that whole scene <laughs> in the whole in the movie that that five minutes or whatever of them of them fighting their own battles but coming together was yeah. the best part of that whole movie. Same thing happened like, to me with Joker. I yeah. hated it, and then I watched it again and. I still really, <laughs> really didn't like the things that I didn't like. But right. the things that are genuinely good about it, I was able to see them more instead of being so hyper-focused on the negatives in it. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, it's it's hard giving a, a an actual formal opinion on things because it's always changing. Yeah, it's hard to write reviews right away at the end of... I'll like do that. I'll go movie. back and read some of the reviews I wrote, like the earliest ones oh, yeah, that I wrote too. here. And I'll be like, I don't think that that movie is as good as I thought it was. Oh, I am so, so prone many. to recency bias. I'll be yeah. like, like if if the ending mostly works and I'm left with that feeling, I'm like, oh, the movie was so good. Yeah. <laughs> but if I watch it again, I'm like, oh. I, I remember years ago, Justice League came out. And somehow it was like better than I ever thought it would be just because I was so <laughs> down on DC. And it, every, movie I was just so dreams. angry that I was like, it's actually not as bad as I thought it would be. I had a good time with it. And then like maybe six months later, I tried to rewatch it. I couldn't get past like that. Yeah, I haven't minutes. seen it again. I, I was strangely so positive bad. about it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, I don't know. That stuff's funny. Like, yeah, opinions always just, just change. For sure. We're just emotional creatures. Like That's why be... I'm so neutral. I know something's going to change. <laughs> right. I feel like I would be like that with a, a bunch of movies that I just haven't gone back and rewatched. I feel like I'm like that the most with like Marvel. There's yeah. only a couple Marvel movies I've actually gone back and rewatched and enjoyed. Oh, the rest same. are more like, that was a good fix. Now what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I just... mean, for how many times I've watched Winter Soldier, I only see Ant-Man and the Wasp once. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. 
I only saw Winter Soldier. I saw it a couple times, but it, but we have a weird, we have yeah. different opinions about that. We I, have talked Ant- about that before. I've watched Ant Man and the Wasp a couple times actually because it's just enjoyable. I've seen it twice. Uh, oh, it, it's because it's, I fell asleep. Yeah, it's a fun time. It's just Doctor Strange. I've watched a couple times because it's just kind of, it to me it was a little different enough and enjoyable and yeah obviously captain america but then if i go outside that like as much as black panther got this super hype i just don't i just don't go back to it yeah. and that's probably one of the better ones that i don't go back to yeah yeah that's like right yeah. on the cusp of I mean, that's how i am with them you know they're they're a one-time mm-hmm. one-time fun time and that's okay black a lot panther of movies probably. are like that <laughs> was true. black it's panther normal. nominated for best picture yes yeah yeah, see, that's like that. That's it was robbed. No, I'm kidding. Not really. <laughs> I'm not saying it always has to win, but I like seeing it. It needs to be acknowledged. It needs to be acknowledged. That's it needs true. To be part of the. It's the same thing with academy. how how much they don't care about comedy. You know. Yeah. Like, there's genuinely great comedies, but they just yeah. never get yeah. recognized. And comedy's so hard to do. So hard. That's why JoJo Rabbit's so great. True. When Probably get... one of the toughest comedies to pull off I've seen in quite a while. Right. I think that's safe Hitler to say. Hitler comedy. I mean, yeah, in this polarized day and age, too, yeah. like the timing of it, it's pretty and ballsy, and it lands, and so much more. It's so great. <laughs> God, I love that movie. You hope it gets rewarded for that. Oh yeah, Boldness. I'm rooting for it to be the underdog for best. It's picture. the front runner for adapted screenplay, so we'll probably win that, which I'll be happy about. I I still think Joker, man. I don't know. <laughs> I I could easily be wrong, but yeah. I just have this weird suspicion that the voters are going to be like. It dealt with mental health. We'll find out Sunday. (laughs) Yeah. Yes, we will find that out Sunday. So what's our new release? Birds of Prey? That's the only one, right? That's the only one. Yep. Hopefully I gave it enough glowing thoughts about it. (laughs) And hopefully you all like it. What is next week? Valentine's Day. Sonic. Sonic. Sonic, yeah. And... The Photograph. The Photograph. And... Fantasy Island. There we go. Yeah, that was the other one. Those are the big three. Yeah. Cool. Well, tune into the Oscars if you have like f- seven hours to kill. <laughs> um, hopefully, Joker wins nothing. Um, and that's just like your Netflix opinion, wins man. <laughs> I just hope everyone has a fun time. You know, <laughs> I'd rather Netflix win all of its categories if it means Joker w- no. gets shut out. Mm. No, that no, I don't want horrible. to get shut out. The score is great. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, the, uh, and Joaquin Phoenix. <laughs> no, he's throw it a bone. Give fine. it to. He's fine. Yeah, uh, we have a Oscar checklist. I think we said that already. Right. Yep. You can download that at SSI, um, d- uh, at SilverScreenInsider dot com, uh, as well as checking out all of our other podcasts. They're available on the site as well. Um, or you can just go to other podcast services. And uh, please check us out at the site that I just <laughs> gave. I, I've lost my train of thought. I'll have the music fade in. Thank, oh, thank no, you. Please have the music fade out. <laughs> quickly, quickly. We're getting to the afternoon on Friday. We, we are uh, getting there. It, it just hit me like, it just, it just hit me. Need, <laughs> need some food. Okay. Have a good weekend, everybody. Thank Bye. you. <laughs>